Today we are going to refine our skills at diagnosing and utilizing the P wave to see the sinus rhythm through and through. But real quick, I'm super excited, guys. I just finished my full EKG online ebook, complete collection. This is where you're going to want to go to become complete master of EKGs. We've got all of my lectures, and for each lecture, we have a full chapter that I've gone through and written for every arrhythmia and finding and mechanism. I am so thrilled, and I want you to try it out for free. So there's a link in the description. Check it out, and without further ado, let's dive into our P waves. The sinus P wave is the hallmark of any sinus rhythm. So for us to be confident in saying that we have a sinus rhythm, a sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, we need to understand how do we define what the P wave would look like if it comes from the sinus node? Because ultimately, remember that the sinus node lives and produces atrial impulse. So with that being said, let's dive a little bit into it. The first thing is just remembering normal cardiac conduction. If I look up here, this is my limb lead diagram. We have our sinus node that sits high within the right atrium, and as it paces, sends that nice signal, the atria depolarize away from the sinus node across the atria, causing the nice P wave. We know that then the AV node captures that signal. It delays the signal for a few seconds, right, so that the ventricles can fill with blood, passes it down the His Purkinje fibers, and we get subsequent depolarization of the ventricles, which produces the nice QRS complex. And so when I look at maybe just a P QRS complex here, you notice I've got this nice P wave. I've got a little bit of a pause between my P and my QRS complex. And that's just how things go. And we know that that's what the sinus rhythm should look like. And what are some details that might allow for us to feel more confident that we can diagnose a sinus rhythm on an EKG? Well, the first thing is that we know that the sinus node behaves in a predictable pattern. We know that its job is to pace the heart regularly. So we know that these impulses that are originating from the sinus node, they should be firing off in some type of regular fashion. It's not gonna be always exactly perfect, but if you look at here, this rhythm, you can see we have nice regularly occurring QRS complexes that are nice and steady throughout with little variation. And so hmm, maybe this is a sinus rhythm. Now, what are the things that we can look for specifically to say this is a sinus rhythm? Well, a sinus rhythm has to come from the sinus node. So let's talk about what things look like more particularly when they come from the sinus node. Well, we know that the sinus node sits high in the right atrium. So here is my SA node, and notice it's in the top corner of the right atrium. And so when it does pace, that first waveform that's gonna be produced is a P wave. The P wave would be from the sinus node. So if it's a sinus P wave, what things look like is you have a wave of depolarization that spreads away from that sinus node. And I want you to notice the direction here. Because the sinus node sits high into the right, Impulses have to go down into the left because they're spreading away from the sinus node. So I like to call this down into the left. Pretty simple. And how can we define that? Well, we do a measurement called the P wave axis. Just like you measure a QRS axis, you do a P wave axis. And so all you have to do to confirm is look in our limb leads, which are leads one, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. And if I zoom in on my diagram of the limb leads, just like we did here, I notice that if I come down to AVF, notice AVF is exactly the downward lead. And so any signal heading down will produce a positive deflection in that lead, and so we should have a positive P wave in the downward lead AVF if my P waves are heading down. Also, if they're heading to the left, well, my leftward facing lead is lead one, and so anything that's heading towards the left from right to left, which we know our sinus P wave should, 
then we will have an upright P wave in lead one. And that's essentially kind of our two perpendicular angles that if they're positive, we know that signal within the atria is heading down and to the left. And if it's heading down to the left and we have those P waves and we see a rhythm that's behaving appropriately for what a sinus node should be doing and we see good AV conduction of the sinus P waves and all the other context clues, we would be able to then confidently say that this is a sinus rhythm that matters, right? Because depending on the symptoms of your patient, the syndrome that they're experiencing and the EKG in front of you, there can be some subtle changes. And so when I look at an EKG, let's look at this one. We see that we have a nice regular rhythm and now let's analyze our P waves. We said that P waves are going down to the left and that would be up in leads one and AVF. So I come here, I see and identify lead one, identify lead AVF, and I look at here and I see upright P wave, upright P wave, upright P wave. So my lead one P waves are upright and AVF, upright, upright, upright. So that tells me that those P waves are heading down to the left and that this is a sinus rhythm. So I really hope this helps. Remember that the anatomical approach to EKG utilizes all the different behaviors of all the different waveforms, all the different intervals, and we all, it, it gives us a, a degree of certainty of our diagnosis. That's what we're doing with EKG, is it's how certain are we that this is the rhythm in front of us, and that allows for us to um, move forward with treatment and good physiology. So I hope this helps. Um, stick around. We've got some other good quick tips coming along soon. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments, and if not, Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Take care.